Hello! This is another devlog for my game, Aiden Jr. If you are a subscriber, you've probably seen this fellow pop up every now and then. If you are completely new to this channel, welcome. There are a bunch of devlogs that you could watch if you want to catch up. It's been a while since I've made my last devlog and you might ask yourself how much progress did I made in between. Spoiler alert, not too much. No, not too much progress at all. Um, turned out that combining life and game development is sometimes not, not that easy. <laughs> it's pretty hard, actually. <laughs> Reminds me of a meme that uh, one of the chappies just posted on Discord. <laughs> I think every game developer can relate to that meme. The main reason of the lack of progress on the game is due to the fact that I'm moving houses. I will be moving in officially somewhere next month and hopefully from that moment on I can give the game more time and attention that, that it deserves. I didn't sit completely still though. In fact, I'm actually very proud of the thing that I'm about to show you. And that is the enemy class AI. Yes, in this video I'm going to show you my work on the enemy, the crab in this case, uh, by giving it some AI. I gave it a line of sight so it can detect the player. I also made it so that you can hide from the enemy by implementing this ray casting functionality uh, that only detects you when there's no obstruction between you and the enemy. Because of the busy times, this is just going to be a devlog, not a tutorial yet, but I will make tutorials about basically anything that you see in this video. So if you don't want to miss out, subscribe. Let's get to it. While I'm not 100% sure what I showed you last time with the devlogs, I do know that it looked way prettier than what you're about to see right now. And that's mainly due to the fact that I started over. <laughs> yeah, I completely threw away what I had uh, because I just wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with the overall project layout and more specifically, I wasn't happy the way I implemented the state machine. So this time around, I put way more focus into the project layout and I implemented Limbo AI for both the behavior trees and the state machine. And like I mentioned earlier, I am going to make tutorials about the state machine and the behavior tree, uh, but this video will just be a little showcase of my own game. I'm gonna put the player somewhere over here. Alrighty, let me jump over here real quick and explain you what you are seeing. Um, I realize that there are many collision shapes. Every blue line is basically a, a collision mesh, but uh, try to focus on the crabs. If you look closely, you can see this little triangle, like this, uh, this cone shape. Not really a cone, it's, it's a triangle. Um, that is basically the uh, line of sight. Um, I will probably make it an actual actual cone to make it more realistic, but I had some trouble uh, importing cones in Godot. For some reason, you don't get to add cones out of the box. Um, and whenever I made one in Blender, uh, everything just broke down. <laughs> so currently it's just a triangle, uh, but it does the job for the prototype. The moment I enter the triangle, and I can show it to you and right now, hopefully the crab will turn around. <laughs> but whenever you are in the cone right now, uh, it potentially can see you. In this case, the line was still red because there was a block between me and the little fella. Uh, I made that by using a raycast. So the moment I'm inside the cone, I will fire this raycast line that you saw. And when there are objects between me and the crab, it doesn't see me. But the moment there are no objects and I just walk into the cone, it becomes green and then our little guy decides to follow us. I can run from it and at some point it will give up. I think it gave up right now. Yes, it did. And then we'll just try again. And it gave up again. So yeah, it looks very simple, very basic, but for a beginner game developer, this was just like the absolute best. <laughs> I felt so accomplished and fulfilled. I was ready to die. No, not ready to die. I still need to complete the game, but it was so cool whenever I got this thing to work. Also, when he's, um, when he's very nearby, he just falls in love with you. <laughs> At some point, you know, I will replace that with combat. But for now, the crabs are lovers, not fighters. I'm a lover, not a fighter. You guys probably don't know that reference. It's a Michael Jackson song with Paul McCartney. Yes, I am very old 
And again, I will make tutorials about basically anything that you see in this video, but I can give you a little sneak peek on how I did all these things. One of the things that I did is that you are able to set a property called spawn area range. It, it is set to five. In this case, it's basically two and a half meters to the left and two and a half meters to the right. It serves as the home of the enemy if the enemy gets um, like lost for some reason because it was uh, chasing you or it gets uh, pushed out of that area it will eventually go back to that and by doing so because the enemies have completely random movement behavior i still get to control somewhat where all the enemies are i can show you how that works i can delete the other guy and i can lure this fella right over here no, a little, little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, come to me. And then I go here. And I think, yeah, it lost track of me. And now it will slowly get back to its spawning area. It still does it in a natural way. It's not like in a hurry. But it will go back. Eventually. And by doing so, you somewhat have control over the population of the whole level. So in this case, there's one on the left, one on the right. And I want to keep it that way. I want to have some control over that. They will never uh, be in the same spot unless I tell them that they have a bigger spawn area. And the fun thing about that is that I can simply increase this one. And therefore, the, uh, the crab will most likely roam way further into the level. The next one, the aggro reset distance. Uh, this is currently the distance where the enemy will start to ignore you while it's chasing you. This will most likely change in the future that some enemies will forever uh, chase you unless you hide. But for now, it's just a distance that uh, make it so that the enemies will at some point give up. I deleted the enemies for now because I want to show you the movement system, which I completely revamped. It probably looks the same. To the naked eye but it's way more snappier i especially like how the way the crouching works or the in shield animation Whee! Boom, 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 boom. you can do all those little slides you can also do a jump into roll yeah it's very cool i still have to think about actual gameplay that works together with this mechanic but some easy um, gameplay mechanics are probably going through fire while in shield, so you don't get hurt. Um, obviously, going beneath certain objects. Uh, I think we can do a little bit more. It also serves as a, a sort of a double jump, because you will get this little tiny extra of jump velocity whenever you go into the shield. Like mentioned earlier, I completely replaced the state machine with the Limbo AI state machine add-on. Um, but I'm still pretty stubborn, so I separated uh, all states into separate code files. For now, it just works better this way for, for the monkey brain. Maybe later on, when I've learned more, I, I will agree with you guys and I will put it back into the player code. I want to end the video by showing you guys the behavior tree. Um, I'm still pretty much a noob at it. But regardless, I'm very proud. <laughs> I'm very proud that I made this work. But in a nutshell, we have two different sequences. One sequence is chase player. And it will check whether the character, the, the crab, is aggressive. If it fails, it will go to the other sequence. In this case, a random move. The random move sequence will first pick a spot in the world where the enemy wants to move. Then it will move to the uh, specific spot and then it will wait um, in between one or four seconds. And by having this random move sequence, it will go left or right in a random fashion. It will also wait, sometimes short, sometimes longer. And it creates this, you know, this AI, like a living little, little being, which is so much fun to program. You know, it, it gives you this, this God complex, like you're creating this little world. Where, where different entities do their own thing. It's, it's very addicting. And the chase player sequence, um, whenever the, the crab is aggressive, uh, it will move towards the player. And whenever it succeeded, it will play a animation love in this case, and the heart will show. And then it will wait one to four seconds before it does the next move. 
And by no means this behavior tree will uh, keep being this small. It will probably quadruple or even get, get longer. Uh, but I am very proud that I understand the basics of a behavior tree. The way sequences work and the way tasks work and what happens when a task fails or a sequence fails. It's, it's, uh, there's a whole logic behind it and it took me quite a while to, uh, to understand that. All right, let's see what happens if we add way too many crabs. <laughs> oh, there's so much love. That's what the world needs. More crabs. Man, game developing is so much fun. <laughs> it's hard to explain. Oh, yes, I died it together with one crab friend. At least I'm not dying alone. <laughs> if anybody asks you what's so fun about game development, just show them this clip. <laughs> if, you, if you don't get happy because of this clip, then then you're then you are lost. Oh, I died again. What's next? you might ask regarding the progress uh, on the game. Uh, first, I really need to move into the new house so I can give the game the attention that it really deserves. Um, but after that, I'm going to focus on art direction uh, real quick, or not real quick, it's probably gonna take a long time. I already uh, tested out, experimented a bit with 3D objects for the village and the buildings in the first world. Um, whenever I'm happy with that, I'm going to combine it all. So we have a first level, that looks pretty with the with the water, with the palm trees, with the buildings, with some roaming enemies, and then I'm probably going to replace the uh, the crab uh, the crabs falling in love with actual combat. And the combat's gonna be tricky because if the combat's not good, this whole game's going to fall apart. So that's gonna be a very tricky part. But I'm also looking forward to it because I feel like I've um, learned the basics to go about all that. All right, if you enjoyed this dev vlog, please give it a like, subscribe, and say something nice in the comment section. Uh, also subscribe if you want to see the future tutorials of how I did all these things. Uh, I can't wait to make tutorials about it too, but that's probably going to be uh, early next year, or maybe one in December. I, I, I'm not sure. No promises, all right? <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.